One of the more powerful features of Maya is the ability to render passes using Mental Ray. The advantage to rendering in passes is the ability to take your final rendered image and break it down into its component parts. So I'll show you what I mean. I've got After Effects open here on my desktop and I've rendered out this shot using several different passes. Each one of those passes has been composited back into this image. So if I go through here and toggle off the visibility of those passes, there you can see the ambient pass on top here is the specular highlights that are uh, showing here. And then down here is the ambient occlusion that's on and off there. So you can see how each one of those passes contributes to the final image. But in addition to that, you can go in here and start to tweak the amount that that particular layer contributes to this composition. So if I go in here to the uh, levels control on the ambient layer and start to drag the gamma, you can see I can affect the overall brightness uh, just in the ambient layer and how that affects the image there. Same thing goes up here for reflections. If I select the reflections layer, uh, I can make them brighter or I can dial them back to almost invisible there. So that's another uh, feature there. If I adjust the levels on the ambient occlusion layer, you can see uh, the dark patches underneath the objects get much darker and bolder, or I can make it very subtle and, and dial that back in as well. Finally, the specular highlights, I can do the same thing here and, and make those as bright or as uh, dim as I wish. So you can see how rendering out the final image in passes gives you greater control in the compositing phase to tweak and adjust your final image to your liking. And obviously it's much faster to make these changes in post-production using a compositing application like After Effects than it is to try to re-render the image in Maya. So I want to show you how I set this up in Maya. So I'm going to switch back to the Maya application. And I've got a very simple scene here. So I want to show you how I set this up using Maya passes with Mental Ray. And the first thing I want to do is open up my Render Settings dialog box so I can turn on Mental Ray. I pull down my render using and I select Mental Ray. When I click on the Passes tab, it brings up the interface that allows me to select which passes I want to include. Over here, if I select this icon, it allows me to create my render passes and it gives me a list of passes to choose from. You can pick and choose from this list of which passes you want to include in your render, but I've settled on eight different passes that are fairly common, so I'll show you those now. From this list, the first one I'm going to do is an ambient pass. and I just select that and highlight it, and I'm going to uh, add that to my list. But I want to show you what the ambient pass does first. So if I switch over here to my uh, rendered image, here's the ambient pass. And you can see that that's taking advantage of an ambient light that I added to the scene. And so it's just giving a kind of a background low light environment. I'll switch back here and add my next layer, which is the ambient occlusion pass. So I can add that to my list by pressing on the command key and highlighting the ambient occlusion pass. This pass is basically a, a, a fake global illumination pass and it's based on the proximity of two pieces of geometry to each other. And it uses that proximity to create a dark region that acts as a, a way of enhancing the contact between those two surfaces. The next pass I'm going to add in here is a beauty pass. And the beauty pass is basically a composite of all the effects that we see here. So you can, you're getting everything that the specular, the highlight, and everything. The only one that is missing from this pass is the effect of adding the ambient occlusion in there. The next pass I'm going to add in is the diffuse pass. And the diffuse pass is a combination of uh, color plus shade, material shading and shadows in there. So that gives me all three of those assets in one pass. The next one is Direct Irradiance, and when I add Direct Irradiance in there, so this is just like the Diffuse Pass, except it doesn't have any color information in it. So I can use this in my composite to conceal or reveal certain kinds of effects. The next pass is the Reflection Pass, and that has the effect of rendering out just the reflections, and you, it's a little bit hard to see here, but you can apply this back in your composite to dial in the amount of reflections in the shot. After Reflections is the Shadow Pass, so the shadow pass is actually inverted, so when you apply this, you would actually subtract it from the composition, and the bright parts in this image wind up being dark. And the last pass is a specular pass, and I'm using specular without shadows. And this is just showing you the specular highlights, and again, you can apply this with shadows to uh, remove the parts of the highlight that would be concealed by shadows.
So now that I've selected these eight passes, I'll just run them down again. I've got ambient occlusion, ambient, beauty, diffuse, direct irradiance, reflection, shadow, and specular without shadows. Now that I've selected all eight of those, I'm going to click on create and close, and they get added to my scene passes. However, these will not be rendered in the scene until I come down here and I associate it with the current render layer. So when I do that, they transfer down into this associated passes section. And when they're talking about the render layer, uh, they're referring to this render layer. There's Currently, there's only one. It's the master layer. But if I had more than one render layer, you can associate different passes with different render layers. Now each of the default settings on these passes would serve us well. However, for, there's one thing we want to check out here. It's the ambient occlusion pass. I'm going to come over here to indirect lighting and select that tab. And if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see there's a section here for ambient occlusion. This section controls the global settings for the ambient occlusion. So when I enable that, it sets the number of rays to 256. Frequently, that's not enough, and I'm going to double that to 512, and that should be high enough to get a nice, smooth ambient occlusion render. Now I'm going to go back to my Quality tab and set the Quality presets to the production level, and so that increases the number of reflections and gives me the high quality render that I'll need for this effect. And now we're all set to go. The last thing I want to do back here in my Common tab is to set up a naming convention so that each one of those passes will be saved in its own folder. And I can do that by coming in here to the file name prefix and right clicking on that. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a folder for each one of those passes. So if I sl select the pass name, it shows up here as render pass. When I put a forward slash after that, it creates a folder with the pass name on it. Inside of that folder, I'm going to create a file with the name of the scene. And then if I put an underscore after the scene name, and then I put the pass name after that, I will get a folder named after the pass, and then a file with the scene and pass name in there. So that helps you to identify the passes that you're working with when you start to import them into a compositing application like After Effects. So, one last check before we submit it for rendering. I've come up here and I've got my mental ray enabled. Uh, I've got my folder for the render pass with the scene name and the render pass for each file. When I select on the Passes tab, I've got my eight passes selected and they're associated with the current render layer. When I come over to the Quality tab, it's set to Production. And then finally, when I go over to Indirect Lighting, Ambient Occlusion is enabled and it's set to 512. I can close my render settings now. So once I save the file, I can come over here to my rendering menu and choose Render, Batch Render, and that will start the Mental Ray rendering. So once the rendering is completed here in Maya, I can switch over to the Finder window and see what that rendered output looks like. Here you can see I'm in my Images folder, and it's created for me the eight different folders that we set up, one for each one of the passes. So when I go into the Ambient Pass, you can see just the dim lighting created by the ambient light. When I switch over to the Ambient Occlusion, you can see the shadows created by that particular rendering pass, and so on for the Diffuse Pass and the Director Radiance Pass, and the other passes as well. So each render pass has been saved out to its own folder. Again, this is particularly helpful when you have a sequence of images. That way you can keep them all sorted out and easy to find when it comes time to composite them back together. So as you can see, this process of using render passes in Mental Ray is very powerful and gives you a lot of flexibility in the compositing stages to control how your final composite image is presented and gives you the ability to make adjustments on each one of those passes so that you don't have to render it again in Maya.